Jahan Yamuna, Taha Yamuna, as it says in Rajabhasha. Yamuna Ji, of course, we know she's the daughter of the sun. She, she has emerged from the blissful heart of Narayan. Kalindagiri Mastake, Patatamanda Puru, Jola, Vilasa, Gamano, Lasat, as Wallabachai explains, she cascades down the Kalindi mountain and uh, she uh, runs quickly towards the land of Brindavan like she's a bride rushing to meet her beloved Krishna. Bhakti Nako Sugama Sri Yamane Agama Ore. This sort of sums up the Yamnaji thing. Is that uh, for those who worship Yamnaji, it is easy to understand Krishna. Agama Ore. It's very difficult if you don't worship Yamnaji. Because Yamnaji is considered to be Nirguna. She doesn't have any uh, anger. She doesn't have any competition. There is no thing that, oh, if this, if this soul comes to Krishna before me, where you see that sometimes in some of the other relationships within the Sakhi realm of Vrindavan. Maybe this is beyond the scope of your current project. But I say it anyways. The Yamnaji, Yamnaji doesn't have any issue with anyone. She just wants to take her children who are established with the divine reality and reestablish them once again in their original blissful condition. So that's why the poet says that it's very easy with Yamuna to attain. And he says, Taha Yamahure Taha Jore. And he says there that Yama, the god of, god of retribution, stands a bit of stands at a bit of a distance from those bhaktas who worship Yamnaji with his folded hands and respect to them. So that is the divine form. Yamna has three forms. She has a form as a river, which we know is polluted, that barely doesn't even flow through Delhi anymore. That is the subject of, you know, a lot of our current prayers that we want to somehow clean up this river who was considered to be so incredibly sacred. And for that, you know, there are numerous efforts being undertaken. So the water in the Yamnaji flows in the rainy season. The Yamnaji is wider and the hot season is smaller. So that's the adibotic. That's her material form. And then there is the, the adyatmic Yamnaji. And that is the, the force that is found within the water or by her banks that is the... Uh, it's the force that purifies her followers and makes them worthy of spiritual attainment. And then there is the third form of Yamnaji that is the divine form, and she is a Swamini. She is one of Krishna's beloved. Namatta Krishna Turiya Priyam, as Mahabhu says. And so I bow to the fourth, Turiya, which of course is a very important yogic word, the fourth state of consciousness, or she is Nirguna. She is beyond Thomas, uh, Rajas, and Sattvic. And that form of Yamnaji, I have pictures of her pretty much in every room of my house here, uh, is generally depicted of her dressed up like Lord Krishna. Many people wouldn't even think, oh, well, that's a picture of Krishna, but actually it's Yamuna. She's holding um, a garland in her hand, and she's wearing a mukata crown. And uh, her Sanskrit name is Krishna with a long A, as opposed to Krishna with a short A. So uh, Krishna, Guna, Varana, she's got Krishna's virtues, she's got Krishna's form, she's swarthy, like that. And, uh, and different from Kalindi, who is the Patarani from Dwarkalila. Many, many people think that Kalindi is Yamnaji in the Dwarkalila. But actually, Kalindi lives in the Yamna River, she's not Yamanaji something for people who have that. And of course, she is the grace goddess. Um, the lines that say, Binamange kodet kahanko indikehet. Without even asking her, she gives. Who can praise her beneficial nature? It's beyond expression. One thing I did notice, that in the morning I would go out, it was in, during this season, it was in December 1972 when I first came here, and I would lie on her banks. And I had done several years of meditation and yoga practice prior to coming to India, but the joy that I felt by just lying on Yamnaji's banks without trying to do any spiritual practice 
far excelled any insight or spiritual understanding that I had attained through copious practice that I did elsewhere. So that was my in initial hit of Yamajida. And I thought, this is amazing. You know, without really, you know, I wasn't on any drugs. I wasn't even trying to practice meditation. Or I wasn't even chanting. I wasn't doing anything. I was just lying by her banks. And I felt this incredible sense of union with the divine. And uh, I'll never forget those feelings because, um, you know, it wasn't like someone told me, you have to worship Yamaji or Yamaji has this potency. No one told me. I just, it was just a direct experience. And it's a side of India that I don't fully understand. And I don't know whether anyone understands it. Is that why would a river that is considered to be so sacred be treated in such a harmful way in terms of um, polluting her with all the chemicals and the dyes from the saris and the plastic and cutting off her flow when she enters Delhi, it doesn't even flow, the river stops and somehow re-emerges magically a little bit further south. I mean, this is a river that we all worship. So I don't understand that. And I don't think anyone does. And I think that when people do understand the relationship between the water and her ability to transform individuals and maybe their, their consciousness so that they begin to respect the water, because water, jelajivan, water is life, so that her transformational powers will maybe enter into the consciousness of enough people so that they will start to respect the river the way the river respects them. Yamnaji brings together the family of devotees and sends them on their way to God. Rade, Rade.